everyone. My name is Chrissy and I'm here for part two of the Return to Children portion of the Return and Reunion curriculum. Uh, so the next thing I want to talk about is that depending on the age of your child, your child's reactions um, might be different. Um, so I like this handout. Please reach out to Fleet and Family and we can send this to you in a PDF file and we can um, you can print it off in your offices. But it kind of talks about children's um, reactions and then one of the ways that you can t use a technique for them to communicate a little bit better. So you might have a general like idea and I hear sometimes when I do these return and reunion courses, I talk with parents who will say something like, oh, I just would love, wouldn't it be so awesome if my toddler just ran over to me and gave me the biggest hug? And I want them also to have that experience. However, um, I wanna also tamper their expectations and just say, that might happen and it might not. So just be prepared um, for that, for a different reaction. So that video, and I love these videos too. I'll watch those videos constantly. But I love those videos where, you know, the service member walks off the ship and the kids go running and they're screaming and then mom, dad, mom, dad, and they hug and it's just like a very emotional, wonderful moment. I want you to think that that is mostly this age group, the six to 12 age group, okay? The children that are younger and the children that are older are just going to communicate love and affection or um, feelings of loneliness or sadness differently. So even though a young child might be really excited to see you, um, your presence might be very big or intimidating um, and they might be shy or clingy or pull away. Um, three to five year olds, sometimes they might just need some time to, to for you to warm up, they want to just test the waters. So they're not going to necessarily run and and jump onto um, a, ch a person that they haven't seen in a long time. And then sometimes the teenagers can be like, you know, just I'm too cool to show this emotion anymore. I'm not comfortable displaying public emotion. Um, I don't want to admit that I feel a little vulnerable and a little unstable or that I'm really excited. I don't want to admit that in front of people. So remind yourself of that as well. There's two books that Military One Source has. One is called Home Again and the other one is called Over There. So for really young children, and again, young children, I'm talking about toddlers, um, uh, preschool aged kids, they have trouble understanding distance and time. So parents going away and coming back that's a that's not a they don't understand oh my dad's only going to work and then coming back so you might even see a situation with a toddler or a preschooler where i go home for palm for uh for two weeks and then we it's time to go back to work but i bring you to the cdc and the meltdown is just huge because the child doesn't always understand what's happening so Look for those additional resources. They also have a good Sesame Street DVD that talks about deployments. Um, so make sure that we reach out and have some additional people that could talk to them about dealing with some of the changes that, that go forward. So talk with your caregivers, see what's, what's happening. Make sure the caregiver's regularly talking about the absence of the sailor and the service member, that they're regularly bringing them up. And if you haven't reached out in a while, Find a way that you can send an email, send a video if possible, maybe a few pictures, and that way we can start to um, reintegrate you into that child's life if you haven't been doing that already. Okay, so the next thing I wanna bring up is the opportunity ladder. Now, many times because we really just wanna get involved and get back to the normal uh, flow of the family unit, we might want to kind of jump ahead before the child's ready. So this is something to say, like a step-by-step -step process, and we have this in the handout as well, right here. So, and this is, I would suggest reaching out and thinking about a couple of ways that you wanna bond with your child or the way that you want the relationship to look. So the bottom one here, could be like, I have a concern, so I'm gonna fill out a concern and then I'm going to put in a goal. So my concern might be, will my child and I get along? It's been a long time since we've been together. I know that they've bonded really well with their caregiver, with their grandparent or their um, parent or step-parent. Will 
will that child and I get along? And the goal would be, yes, my child and I will get along great. We're gonna have a good relationship. So there are steps in between there, but let's think about what that looks like. So I always remind parents, like maybe the first thing is you say, I've missed you and I'm proud of you and I'm excited to be a part of your life. So that's the first thing we want to do is tell them, hey, good job, buddy. I see that you're doing a great job tying your shoes now. You're going to be such a big kid soon. I bet you'll be tying football cleats and baseball cleats any day now. So I'm super excited about that. So tell them what you appreciate um, about, about them. And then the one, the next thing might be, hey, I'm going to get really involved with something my child likes to do. Um, so that will give the child some permission in, in the reintegration process. So for example, I just brought some toys for my kids. I've got a, a three-year-old, he really likes garbage trucks and that is not going away. I don't know why garbage trucks, but I have we have several garbage trucks in our house and every time there's a birthday or an, uh, an event, he's like more garbage trucks. So I gotta love the garbage trucks because I love my son, right? Um, you might also have a child who's really into something like fairy, this isn't even a unicorn, is it? I don't know what this is. But my daughter's into completely different things and it might not be something I'm generally interested in. Um, but the next step after I tell her I'm proud of her is to get involved in something she really likes and show an interest. Um, for really young children who can't express to you an interest, just sitting on the floor and being available and not sitting on the floor like this because this actually communicates I'm not interested in what's going on. It would be getting down not too close and just being generally interested in what are you doing and asking some questions like, oh, I like unicorns too. Do you like the one with the pink hair better or the purple hair? Some things like this will really help. And then after we've kind of develop some trust and communication with that child, the next step we could do is say, you know what, when I was seven, I liked playing hopscotch. Do you know how to play hopscotch? All right, do you have any chalk? Show me where the chalk is in the house, because I haven't been here in a while, remember? Show me where the chalk is. So some of those things are just kind of the general step process we have to getting over or accomplishing the goal that we might have with a concern with our children. So consider getting this and consider filling it out. And I recommend filling it out because that kind of makes it so that it solidifies in our head what we want to have next in the process of getting to know and getting reintegrated with our children. I wanna remind you, and I've reminded people in the other uh, portions of this course, that the reintegration process on average takes six weeks. So if you have a few weeks that have passed by, two or three, where you feel like this child still just does not seem to want to have a relationship with me, give it time. Think about small steps. Another tip that I really like, especially for younger children, is try to interject yourself into a portion of the day that the child already enjoys. So when my son was um, toddler and newborn age, I was the milk truck, I was the main caregiver, and my spouse was working full time, um, but my son was usually always happy at bath time. So since he wasn't a part of the regular feeding process, he was gone during the day, he would have to leave occasionally for work, he would make time in his day when he was home to make bath time his part of the day. And then that also allowed me to have as the main caregiver to have a break and have a portion of my day where I could do something that I wanted to do for me and not for that child. So consider interjecting yourself into a daily part of that child's routine for younger children. For older children, ask how you can get involved. Hey, I saw that you uh, picked up basketball since I've been gone. I don't really know how to play. Can you teach me? You might know how to play, but this is another way that your child can kind of get involved teaching you something. All right. I'll check you back for part three of Return to Children.